In a lot of practical situations, conditional probability in one direction is perfectly natural. When drawing two cards, it's very natural to predict the second card given the value of the first card. But what if we want to do the other direction? What if we want to predict what the first card was given information about the second card? That's where Bayes' theorem comes in. So let's take a look at an example. Let's say I received 49 emails in one day. Of these, 13 were marked as spam, and they actually were spam, and no good messages were tagged. If I know I received 25 good emails, 11 spam emails actually made it into my inbox. One question we can ask is, what is the probability that something that made it to my inbox is actually spam? This is a natural direction. There are 36 messages in my inbox, 11 of them are spam, so the probability of spam, given that it's in my inbox, is just 11 out of 36. But what about something like this? What is the probability that a message was tagged as spam, given that it's actually spam? We're going to approach this by making a tree. The first branches are going to be whether or not an email was tagged as spam or wasn't tagged as spam. I have all the information about how many messages actually made it to my inbox, and so we can use this as our first branches for the tree. Um, 13 out of the 49 were tagged and 36 out of the 49 were not. From each of these, we now have to split it into whether or not the message is actually spam or not. So we split it up into two branches for each of these. One of the branches will be spam, and the other branch will be not spam. Each of these probabilities now are going to be conditional probabilities, and we're going to look at the probability that something is spam, given that it was tagged, and the probability that something's not spam given it's not tagged, and so on from there. So 13 out of the 13 tagged messages were spam, 0 were not spam, 11 of the 36 were spam if they were not tagged, and 25 of them were not. We would like to find out what is the probability that a message was tagged given that it was spam. This is the opposite of what the table itself tells us. The tree will allow us to say what the probability something is spam given it was tagged was, but not the other way around. So we look at each of the branches, and we look at the probability we end up at any of the branches, and that's just multiplying down the branches. And then we want to make a fraction. The fraction will have the event in the numerator and what we consider the sample space in the denominator. So what is our sample space in this case? We're given that it's spam, so we're only going to look at the branches that end up in us having spam. That's these two branches right here. Out of these, the numerator is going to have to be the ones that I'm looking for, the ones that were tagged. And so I'm looking at 13 over 49 divided by the two parts of the sample space together, 13 49ths plus 11 49ths. Multiply everything out and we end up with 13 24ths, and that will be our probability. This is essentially what Bayes' theorem is saying. If we want to do a conditional probability, but the tree is moving in the wrong direction, we're going to make a tree in the right direction and look at the probability given the restricted sample space that our, we're looking for. One thing to keep in mind though, the problems may give you answers that seem wrong. For an example of this, let's look at this problem here. 1% of the population has a rare disease. A company develops a test for the disease which has a 95% success rating. That means 95% of the people who have the disease test positive. Also, there's a 4% false positive rating. If you don't have the disease, you still may be tested positive 4% of the time. If you go to the doctor's office and you're tested positive for this disease, how likely is it that you actually have it? The two events we're working on here are you have the disease and you test positive. And we know what the probability of testing positive given you have the disease is. That's 95%. So what about the other direction? Well, we make the tree. And the tree is going to look like this because we know the conditional probabilities in this particular direction. The probability they test positive given they have the disease is 95%. With this, we can actually look for the probability that we have the disease given that we test positive, 
by using a similar type of argument as before. We're going to only look at the test positive branches and use the has disease as a numerator. So we fill in the different probabilities. There's a 0 0.01 chance that we have the disease and a 0.99 chance we don't. Of the people who have the disease, 95% test positive and 5% test negative. The people who don't have the disease, 4% test positive, which leaves 96% to test negative. The branches that we're looking for are going to be the test positive branches. We compute the probabilities along the branches and we end up with these numbers here. And you'll notice that most of the population fits in the doesn't have disease and test negative. 95% of everybody is in there. All the other populations are much smaller. We'll talk a little bit more about this in a second. So we're looking for has the disease, and we want to only look at the ones where we test positive, which are these two here. So those two branches create our sample space, and out of those two branches, only the one where they actually have the disease becomes the numerator. So we put everything together, we get 0 0.0095 as our numerator, and our denominator is 0 0.0396 plus 0 0.0095. If we do the computation, what we end up with is 0.1935, or about a 19% chance that we actually have the disease given that we tested positive. This might seem really low, but if you think about it the right way, it's going to make sense. If our population only has 100 people, where would these people fit onto this tree? Only one person would have the disease, and 99 people would not. Looking at the percentages we got for the different branches, that means that one person will probably have tested positive and no, none of them will test negative. Out of the 99, four will have tested positive and 95 will have tested negative. So five people tested positive, but only one of them actually has the disease. This means there's only about a one in five or about a 20% chance that a randomly selected person who tested positive is the person who has the disease. 